Okay, and this week's weather extra, considering how good we've done for rain and snow to close out 2021 and enter this year, I wanted to just take a moment to celebrate where we are first with some really cool visuals, but then also lend some perspective on why every time we talk about how wonderful the rain has been, there's always the caveat of, but... We're not out of the drought quite yet, and I'll explain why. First off, here's the really positive stuff. A, a, a gorgeous map put together by the National Weather Service office, actually based in Sacramento, that local office, gave us a visual to kind of grasp how this water year has gone so far for California. See the deep shades of green showing up here through the Bay Area? This is showing you the rainfall that we've gotten so far for this point in the year compared to how much rainfall we got all year last year. So the deeper the shade of green on here, there's a scale over there. If you're in the deep shade of green, you've gotten 200% of the amount of precipitation just at this point than what we got all last year. We've already doubled the amount of the entire water year for 2020-21 with just these first few months of 2021-2022. So we're off to a good start, considering we still have several more months to go, and we've already doubled what we got for all year last year. I thought that map was a real pretty way of showing that. And it's a real feel-good map, as it should be. And then they also included a little more context to that. In fact, the total volume of water that has fallen statewide, so not just that deep patch of green for the Bay Area, which has done really well, but if you look at the whole state now, we're not twice as much, but on average for the whole state, Date, we've already gotten more rain at this point in the water year, only a few months in, than we got all year for the last water year. So that's good news as well. Here's another really cool feel-good visual. This is where the snowpack stands in the Sierra. And no doubt you've probably heard the report that came out uh, at the very end of December when we did the first snow survey of the year. The snowpack in the Sierra is at 160% of average. And remember, what we're really telling you there is not how deep the snow is. We don't care how deep the snow is because that can change and vary, and a lot of that's air and did it fall recently. What we want to know is how much water is being stored in the snowpack, and that's what's being displayed on this map. We can actually fly around on this. It's just one of those really cool ways to visualize the snow in the Sierra. We're taking automated sensor satellite data, we're interpolating it, we're putting it on Google Earth, and it's just cool. Uh, let's come into the foothills. When you look at a map like this, the key up on top is showing you how many inches of equivalent water are in the snowpack. And when you get into those deeper shades of white, I did this with you a couple of weeks ago on Weather Extra, where we talked about how there's about 20 to 25 inches in there. Let's say you took, you know, 24 inches. In other words, if you melted all the snow down, you'd have standing water at two feet deep in some of those deepest parts. It's not that way across the whole range. I mean, down here in the foothills, like by Murphy's and Placerville, there's not anywhere near that amount of water being stored because we're in the shades of light blue. But it still says a lot about how good this season has gone that the snow has gotten that low. I mean, you can see Placerville and Pollock Pines and all those lower elevations included in there. Now, here's where we end and add some of the context. Let's go to a website. And this is off of the California Data Exchange Center. This is the storehouse. This is the place you go for the official accounting of where we are for a lot of things, precipitation and hydrology in the state. But specifically here, we're looking at snowpack. Let's scroll down on this map and you're gonna see the whole state of California show up. So here's where the context comes in for why I say, it's wonderful that we're at 160% of average for the snowpack right now. That's great, we should be celebrating that. But when you look at the snow report numbers, you get two numbers. You get the number on the right over here, which shows you the Central Sierra at 161% of average. If the, if the print is small, I apologize, but that's what it says there for the Central Sierra. And that was the report that came out at the end of the year when they did the snow survey up at Phillips Station and, and the official snow survey was released and it was 160%. For that date, that's the January 1st snow survey. There's another number right next to that, the number on the left. And that is 58%. That's actually the far more important number because that number is telling you where we are in the snowpack 
in terms of where we need it to be on April 1st. So for the Central Sierra and the Sierra as a whole, we're right at about 60% of where we need the snowpack to be on April 1st. April 1st is the most important snow survey of the year. On average, that's when the snowpack is at its deepest. On average, that's when the snowpack starts melting away. It starts going down fast after April 1st, faster and faster, in fact, over the last several years as the snowpack melts quicker than it has in years past. But April 1st is what matters. So here's the context. We've only gotten 60% of an average year so far. Now, we still have several more months to go, and we can add to that certainly, and hopefully the storms keep coming. But if it didn't snow at all for the rest of this winter, and we maintained the snowpack that was there, didn't lose any of it, on April 1st, we'd only have 60% of average. And to get out of this drought, we not only need 100% of average, we need to come in at like 200% of average. So right now, for the snow survey that matters most for April 1st, we've only gotten 60% of it. That is why, after we celebrate 160% of average for today's date, but we're only at 60% of where we need to be for the whole year. And on that last image, if we look at the rainfall totals, 200% at this point of what we got all last year. Well, last year was pretty dismal. It's not really a good year to compare things to. If you look at the rainfall that we got total for last year, the whole year of average, we only got about 30% of what we should have. So while it looks great on a map to celebrate, we got 200%, we got double what we got all last year. Well, yeah, last year we only got 30% of what we should have. So there's your context in terms of comparing it to that. So far, we're at about 60% of the rainfall that we would need for an average water year. We're at 200% for where we'd need to be now on January 1st. But if it never rained again for the rest of this water year, we're going to end it with only 60% of what we should get. And again, we don't just need 100% of average with the drought we're in. We need water years to come in at 150 to 200% of average to get out of it. So that's why there's always that caveat. Yes, this is great news, but no, this does not end the drought. There is still a lot of winter to go. So hopefully the trend continues and uh, we'll keep sharing the really cool visuals and the context as we go through. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.